many longevity gurus tell you to take dozens of different kinds of supplements to live longer but there are actually some supplements and pharmaceuticals that shorten your lifespan and accelerate aging which i'm going to cover in this video i'm the party pooper the first supplements on the list are nmn and nicotinamide riboside now this might come as a shocker because nmn and nicotinamide riboside have become very popular as nad boosters over the past few years there are some interesting studies in humans suggesting that nmn and nicotinamide riboside can help with some aspects of aging and slowing down age related decline and improving like functional outcomes but there's no evidence even in animal studies that they would extend lifespan and i personally do think that using nmn and nicotinamide riboside whichever it is would have some positive effects in slowing down some of the age related decline that happens with aging the problem is that if you are just taking either nmn or nicotinamide riboside then you will also lose and buffer out some methyl donors dna methylation as a process has an important role in regulating lifespan and longevity through epigenetics dna hypomethylation contributes to genomic instability which is one of the hallmarks of aging and can initiate intestinal cancer so if you are taking nmn or nicotinamide riboside then you will buffer out some of your methyl donors which can lead to hypomethylation, especially if you're taking high amounts of NMN or nicotinamide riboside every day for a long time. Now, one of the ways to prevent that is to combine your NMN and nicotinamide riboside with a methyl donor like trimethylglycine. So I don't think it's a good idea to take NMN or nicotinamide riboside alone. You want to take it with a methyl donor. Number two is metformin for non-diabetics. Metformin is the most common diabetic drug in the world, and in diabetics, metformin does reduce the risk of mortality and cardiovascular mortality mortality. Diabetes generally shortens life expectancy by 10 to 20 years depending on whether you get diabetes early in life or later in life. So if you have diabetes or pre-diabetes even then taking metformin can be life-saving. In 2014 there was an observational study that suggested that diabetics taking metformin could live 15% longer than non-diabetics not taking metformin. The problem with this study is that it's an observational study and they didn't control for any other variables. A recent 2022 study reassessed that 2014 study. They found that in case control pairs, using metformin was found to be associated with increased mortality across all levels of cumulative use. Meaning that no matter the dose, metformin use was linked to higher mortality risk, primarily because metformin users had diabetes and diabetics generally have shorter life expectancy. There was a 2008 study on mice that found metformin increased mean lifespan by 37.8%, and maximum lifespan by 10.3%. However, this study used spontaneous hypertensive rats, which was an inbred genetic model that develops high blood pressure. Another 2016 study used genetically diverse mice and found that metformin alone didn't extend lifespan, but combined with rapamycin, it did. So if anything, then it suggests that rapamycin has these life extension effects, which is supported by multiple other studies finding that rapamycin has life extension effects in animals. The danger of taking metformin as a non-diabetic for recreational use and for longevity purposes is that it has many negative effects on your fitness. Metformin reduces VO2 max, muscle mass, muscle strength, and testosterone levels. A higher VO2 max is one of the biggest predictors of reduced all-cause mortality as seen in multiple studies. People with the highest VO2 max have up to four times lower risk of all-cause mortality than the individuals with the lowest VO2 max. Muscle strength and muscle mass are also linked to reduced mortality and greater survival. So taking metformin in hopes of extending your lifespan, you could be actually doing yourself a disservice by blunting the positive effects of exercise and also making yourself less fit. It's a trap. Next up, we have high-dose antioxidants. One of the main theories of aging is the free radical theory of aging, that oxidative stress and inflammation are what cause aging. So the idea goes that taking a lot of antioxidants to reduce the oxidative stress is an important strategy for living longer. But is it really the case? High intake of antioxidants in animals has repeatedly shortened lifespan. A 2005 meta-analysis found that high-dose vitamin E supplementation, equal or greater than 400 IUs per day, showed increased risk for all-cause mortality. A 2007 meta-analysis on randomized clinical trials found that among the trials with low risk of bias, antioxidant supplementation increased mortality risk by 5% compared to the control group. Another 2012 meta-analysis on 78 randomized clinical trials found that among the 56 trials with low risk of bias, antioxidant supplementation increased mortality by about 4% more than the controls. After excluding the trials with potential confounding variables, 
38 trials with low risk of bias showed that antioxidant supplementation increased mortality by 10% compared to the controls. It's been repeatedly shown in several randomized clinical trials that vitamin C and vitamin E don't reduce risk of major cardiovascular events. So even though the increased relative risk is around 5 to 10%, there doesn't seem to be any additional benefits to taking large amounts of antioxidants. So it can only cause harm. There is no benefits that you could get in terms of reducing mortality risk and reducing cardiovascular disease risk but there's only the potential harm that you could get but why do antioxidants cause this effect in terms of increasing mortality risk antioxidants have been seen to blunt the positive effects of exercise so you don't want to take antioxidants to remove the oxidative stress inside your body because that oxidative stress is actually a signaling molecule that makes your body stronger. Of course, in moderation, if you have excess oxidative stress, if you have too high inflammation levels, then yes, antioxidant supplementation could be beneficial. But if you're a healthy person who doesn't have excess oxidative stress and excess inflammation, then it's actually not good to take antioxidants. Number four is going to be growth hormone. Growth hormone injections and peptides are often used to counteract loss of muscle tone seen in aging and help with fat loss. However, growth hormone as a hormone has many pro aging effects. Animals and even humans with lower growth hormone signaling live longer. Mice with genetic mutations leading to growth hormone deficiency are smaller but they're also healthier and they live longer. New insights from animal studies find that growth hormone may actually shorten lifespan. So the natural decline in growth hormone does reduce vitality and it reduces your muscle mass and functional fitness but it might be actually protective against cancer and other age-related diseases. Number five is gonna be iron supplementation. Absolute iron deficiency is linked to higher all-cause mortality and cardiovascular disease but there is a difference between being deficient in iron and being excess in iron iron has an important role in atherosclerosis and lipid peroxidation which drives cardiovascular disease higher body iron stores are associated with cardiovascular disease higher serum iron levels have been seen to be associated with increased mortality in patients with sepsis pre-diabetics with elevated iron levels especially transferrin saturation have substantially higher mortality risk than pre-diabetics with normal iron levels. In older women, iron supplementation has been found to be associated with around 10% increased mortality risk. Meta-analyses on heart failure patients with iron deficiency found that iron supplementation provided no benefits in reducing all-cause mortality. So the thing with iron supplementation and body iron status and iron deficiency is more that if you have iron deficiency, then that's probably due to some health conditions that reduce your heme stores and iron stores inside the body or just a poor diet. If you're experiencing malnutrition, you don't have an adequate diet in terms of nutrients, then you probably will register as having iron deficiency. And that is what associates with increased mortality. The problem is also that taking iron supplements doesn't appear to have any positives in reducing all cause mortality risk and it actually might increase mortality risk. And last supplement on the list is calcium. Several studies have indicated that calcium supplementation over 1000 milligrams a day on top of diet increases the risk of cardiovascular disease, myocardial infarction and coronary heart disease. It's thought that calcium supplements override the homeostatic regulation of serum calcium causing hypercalcemia. Hypercalcemia promotes blood coagulation, vascular calcification and arterial stiffness, which all elevate the risk of cardiovascular disease. The key takeaway is that you should get your calcium from your diet. So there you go. Here is the list of the supplements that can increase your risk of all-cause mortality. They can shorten your lifespan and accelerate aging. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.